Well, we were contacted by uh, over in the States. It was Scott Bain who sent us a fishing rod. But it's got written all over it. It was to catch it, belonged to his father. It says, Fish on, boys. From Scott Bain. It says, TA Fishing Rocks and TA Outdoors Rocks. His dad was, I'm going to read this if I can, Charles Everett Bain. And he would be proud if we used it because he lost his father and he had some bad luck himself. So he wants to try and catch a fish on this. Now, I haven't seen it. It's a fly rod, I believe. But it's quite a special flyer, not just because it belonged to his father, because it says here, he's written on it, this is a rare prototype, we were told. I have only seen two others on the internet. So, if I can get it unwrapped, good old duct tape, I'll show it to you, and we'll see what we're going to be working with. I'll fault my way through the duct tape with a pair of scissors. It's a very, very light rod, I can tell. It says on here, a Mitchell, I think it's, he said it was a Mitchell Conalon. I think I've heard of Conalon rods. But we'll have a look at it. See what we're going to catch using it. Unusual colour. Soft blank. Feel the tip moving. Snake rings, or snake guides, I think you call them in the States. There we go. Gonna put that together. It is a very, very, very soft rod. Very soft rod. Unusual grip on it. I think the grip's like a sort of leather there. And a screw winch fitting at the bottom. Let's get my readers on and we'll see what we can read off it. Very, very unusual uh, colouring on this. And it's so soft, it absolutely has to be on a guess fibreglass. Do you know, I can't even read it, it's so small. I'm going to put two pairs of glasses on. What does that say? It says, Mitchell Conalon, made in France. Special, this is called special. It's got some numbers on it, so any of you collectors out there, you can tell us. In a little box, we've got 138B1. It's only eight and a half feet long. It's to take a line, a DT5-6F. Now that means I know double tapered line, a five to six weight forward, uh, fly weight. It's got a screw winch fitting. The leather is unusual and the foregrip is unusual. I can come in there and show you. I wonder if that depression there, I've never seen a, I've never seen a, and this looks like that's hand stitched leather in there, whether that in line with the rings, when you were casting, I don't fish like that. Is it for putting your finger against the back of it or your thumb against the back of it? There's a depression in there, can you see that? See that little depression? So when you're casting, it stops you going back with your back cast too far. A thumb, I'm trying to imagine how you cast with it, or a forefinger. Got some nice um, gold intermediate weapons there. You can see it's bound up there, and then it goes from the regular large butt ring there down to uh, snake rings, and then so this might have been a test of. Uh, should have put a little bit of grease on that metal ferrule, and I guess a metal ferrule here whipped on, and it's snake rings all the way down, very tight. Well, this is his dad's rod, so this is Scott's dad's rod. He's probably old as I am. Nothing's as old as I am, like two pairs of glasses. So, we've got to try and catch, in memory of Scott's dad, a decent sized fish on this fly rod. I have got some fairly old fly rods, uh, fly reels, I've got some old antique ones, that wouldn't be right. But I've got something possibly around this era that I could use. I'm probably going to take it one to the big fish fisheries and just see how good this is and how I can fish it with a light line and a small reel. So, thanks for that Scott, I'm going to do the best I can. Scott runs his, I think his site's called, I'm looking down there, Twisted Keel Adventures. And I'll tell you what Scott, let's hope we can show the people on YouTube an adventure using your dad's fishing rod.
So to give you an idea how this came about, Scott got in touch with us on one of the comments pages and I want to read some of it to you so you know exactly why I'm trying to catch a fish on his dad's fishing rod. So Scott contacts us and says, Hey Graham, I'm Scott Bain from the US. I wanted to say hey and let you know the reason I wanted to introduce myself is this. I've watched you and Mike for quite some time and I totally enjoy what you all do together. And though I have a love for fishing, boating, canoeing, kayaking, camping, hunting and bushcraft, what I really miss is my dad and he and I doing the things together like you and Mike. Time is short and man, I miss my dad. He passed away about four years ago now, I believe. He was in a bad, I was in a bad head on collision when a car ran a stop sign and hit me on the head while I was riding my motorcycle out on a long trip from South California to the upper peninsula of Michigan and parts of Canada. I suffered numerous injuries including a permanent brain injury which I have come back from miraculously and my daughters, doctors did not think I would even get back to where I am today. The reason I wanted to mention my wreck was during a time I guess it means during of my head injury, I did not even know who I was or anything. I was just in slow recovery. And my father passed away on me and I missed him so much every day. I want to call him and share things with him. Anyway, Graham, I have a few gifts I would love to share with you uh, that were my father's. One being a prototype flywood, blah, blah, blah. So you got it there. You got the gist of it there. Now, I want to take that trout rod out and catch a decent sized trout on it, you know, a decent sized trout, just to see, could I catch a trout A and B, exactly how far did it bend? Because this was a very old rod, and I imagine it's probably just plain glass, just fiberglass. It's not like the carbon fast action rods, it's a slow action, I would call it a soft rod. Anyway, yes indeedy, I took it down to Diva Springs and had a go trying to catch a trout for Scott. This is how I got on. Well, I'm here at Diva Springs. I've got Scott's father's rod here. It's all rigged up, got a small fly. Actually, I don't know what that is, like a black ant with a lead head on it. It's not lead, it's tungsten bead normally. I've got a cloud base over there coming through and they give bad wind and bad rain for tomorrow. The start of it's coming in about two hours time. I'm late again. I'm gonna walk around and see if I can find a decent sized trout and see what we can catch on this rod and give Scott something to look back on and think that rod's still getting used and hopefully still catching a fish. Now I've tried a small reel on it and I've tried my big reel and it just cast a little bit better with a bigger reel. It is actually a very, very, very soft rod, very soft, because it's old, don't forget it's old. So say it is a Mitchell Connellon. I remember the name, I thought they used to make beach rods years ago, Connellons, like a reverse taper soft beach rod many years ago, 40 odd years ago. So this is an old one. I'm gonna walk around, see if I can spot a trout. It's absolutely beautiful here at the moment. You can, I'll turn it around, you can. They've recently done a weed cut here, so it's very, very clear. I'm just gonna walk around, see if I can spot a trout. Now I'm lugging my gear around. I've got to try and um, spot a fish individually if I can. And the margin, they got this one called ribbon weed down there, just in the margins here. You see it down there. Now very often you will get a trout lying in that ribbon weed, but I'm gonna go down in this shadow corner first. Man, it's a beautiful morning. It's gonna be pretty, pretty much a horror story later. A lot of rain coming tomorrow. Boy, do we need it. It's been absolutely drought conditions. In fact, it's been the best summer I've ever known in my life, ever. I'm spotting, I'm looking, I'm looking all the time. Now the benefit of this type of fishing is there's a little bit of smokiness in the water. Whether that's a previous thunderstorm, I don't know. But I'm going to go in a corner here. Oh, just seen one there. I've just seen one walk, just walking, walking, Graham. There's one right in the margins in there. A lot of anglers have walked past that. I'm going to look in this dark corner. There. Oh, there's some on a spring here. Let's put it down there. Because once I lose the light, then I won't be able to uh, see the actual fish's mouth close on the fly. That's what you need, really, because I'm not going to get any long casting done here. I'll set this up for you and see if I can winkle one out. Now, the object of this exercise, guys, is to catch a trout. 
on this rod and just see if it's going to hold up. I want to see how fast that fly sinks first. One, two, three. Hmm, it's not the fastest, fastest sinker. And there's fly casting, casting in and out. We're going to have a go casting later on over there. Just see what this, <gasps> just see what this rod can do. And it's also catching trout, if that makes a sense. Catching trout can be going around the margins looking and just pinging a fly in front of them. But you've got to be able to see them. Now I can see a shape down there. Whether he's going to respond to the fly, I don't know. It's a very slow sinker, this one. There's lots of small roach in there. But if sometimes if you can... It's weird feeling this rod. So it's so soft. Because the modern rods, this is probably all fiberglass all the way through. But the, the modern rod is, uh, say, carbon, and it's much faster action, flicks through much quicker. And I'm using polarising glasses trying to spot fish. Man, that light's going down low. It's getting towards the autumn and it goes around very low behind the trees up here. What I'm going to do, I saw a single fish. You guys come with me. I saw a single fish just here. I saw a single fish just tucked in here somewhere as I was walking along. Whether he's moved or not, I don't know. He may well have moved. No, he's still down there. He's still down there. Let's get you guys staked up. Now, I'm just going to unclip the mic, give myself some freedom here. And just walk along that margin. I'm going to be walking along the... See the ribbon weed there? There's a channel along here. If you can see that channel going through there, you might get a fish patrolling up and down there. So guys, I've now moved down to what they call Spring Lake. Very pretty here. I'm just walking along, looking, I'm seeing trout. Can you see that trout moving over there? There's actually two over there. But we're looking for a decent sized one. Here at Diva Springs, which is where I'm fishing, invariably there's all good trout in here, but they do get some real kachunking great big ones. Out, there's one there, cruising. Because the water's so clear at Diva Springs, it's deceptive. The fish can actually look a lot smaller than they really are because they are, they're deeper, they're just laying deeper. Now I'm always looking around areas like this scum. Because once that wind comes up, once that wind comes up, it's gonna make it difficult for me to see fish with a ripple. There's one just laying Dead still, don't you going to see him just barely drifting along there? Let's have a scout round here. This is a good peninsula, this one, because you can get a big coverage. Look, you can cast from the right and you can cover all the way around here. And the light's pretty good over there for spotting anything. Right, let's get set up. I made a huge mistake as well. There's a kennels over there, and being a Saturday, I think it's the end of the holiday season, you might hear the dogs barking because everybody comes to pick their dogs up, the dogs going nuts, aren't they? Can you blame them? But look how stupid this is. Look, in the rush to get Scott's dad's rod rigged up, there's that thumb bit, I can't work that out. Go, your thumb goes there or your finger? Look what I've done, I've actually got the fly line coming out from behind the arm. So I've got to bite it off, start again, well, I won't bite it off, I'll snip it off. So I think trout fishing gets in. And then I've got to put it through the rod rings and basically got to start all over again. Oh yeah, lovely. No anglers like doing this. When you start seeing trout, you actually want to get in the water as fast as you can. So, strip it all back. I'll get a, let's get a loop, push it through the front. Easily, easily made mistake. Not much good if I want to try casting. I've got to make use of this light. I reckon I've got an hour, barely an hour, before it goes and then I won't be able to target the fish. 
This this rod, by the way, has got uh, I'm going to call that like it's like glass. It's like agate. I think they used to call it agate. Then these rings here. These rings are just regular snake guides. It's got a metal ferrule, but I've had to rub it down with a a bit of wet and dry to get it to go in and some oil. I couldn't get it in. I couldn't risk just a little bit of the ferrule going in there because the rod might bust. It's very, very, very soft rod. The thing is, I come from an era where I remember soft rods. So that's sort of lucky. And I really don't need to do this. I'm trying not to look in the water because I'm seeing fish. Seeing them and catching them are two different things. I think if I do hook one, man alive, I think this rod's going to bend for sure. <laughs> In fact, I know it is. I hope it's going to be Scott. I hope it's going to be up to the job. I'm going to put a little bit of washing up, well, washing up liquid. What do you guys call the ball? Detergent. Washing detergent onto the de degreaser. Anything that's on the leader so it can go down. Feeling I've got to go to a heavier, faster sinking fly with a small dressing. So although this one has some weight, there's actually, that's the fly people, covered in washing up liquid now. I think that extra dressing is slowing the fly down sinking. That's my, that's my take on it. Right, we're all set. I'm going to spike this up, take the mic off and see if I can't get a response from the trout. Well, I haven't had any responses there. I've clipped the mic back up. I'm seeing trout, but they're not looking. I don't think the fly, the fly has to get right down in front of their face and then take it away. And at the moment, there's no response to the fly sinking. If I start it back too soon, there's one near it. If I start it back too soon, they're not interested. It's basically too shallow. The rod, you can see, I just cast away with it here. Let me bring that up a bit for you, just so you can see, because it's, it's almost more about the rod, because this is supposed to be a prototype. Scott was telling me it's a prototype that his father had. It does cast quite a delicate line, I've got to say. It doesn't feel as pokey as I'm used to. So there's a delay in it, look. But although it's soft, it's throwing. I mean, the line is the line. You can see it's throwing a nice line. It doesn't have the extra power to flick it, and yet it's going quite a long way. Now, we used to fish with these rods years ago. Just regular glass rods, catch fish, no problem. It won't pick a big, heavy long line up too well. There's a fish there going short. They're just not responding to what I call the drop. So I'm picking it up. I'll just try it while there's no wind. Let's just try it, stripping it in. Going from short out, it's just so I get used to it. There's a delayed action, obviously the modern rods flick it back more like this. This is sl much slower movement on it. It extends the line all right. Surprising, you think it's really soft and yet... Yeah, I'm still going, I'm not collapsed on the line yet. That's where it dies, just there. But it does throw... It throws a really nice, straight, delicate line. That It's, it's weird, it feels so soft. It's ridiculous. So obviously I can cast far enough to catch a trout. I now have to find one that's going to take a fly. What I need to do, I'm seeing fish move, but they, because it's hot, sunny, sunny weather, it's a summer still, nobody is having anything. They all have locked jaw. I need to see one that makes a response or a turn to the retrieve of the fly and it's not happening. Obviously this is a day to get water. Anybody can come and fish here. It's not private, it's not secret. It's a really a nationally known day to get water. There's a faster swimming one. That might be a, a candidate. I'm going to change this fly in a minute and go fast. Well people, I don't think I'm going to get more than about 30 minutes of 
decent light here for seeing fish. It's going already. I see a fish just in the margins here. Where's he gone? Is that a fish down there? It is. Isn't it? There, spooky or what? Well, it's going to be a tough one, I can see that, guys. And here, look, if you look up there, you can see that cloud. If I hold it against the trees, you see the clouds going that way. That's the edge of the weather front that's coming in, and it's gradually going to grey down to that smoky stuff up there, and then over there is uh, totally grey. The problem being, I don't see any follows, so if I was doing a standard cast and retrieve, it's going to be tough, it's going to be tough not, you know, not, not knowing the area that the trout are in. There's another gentleman down there in the corner, and, uh, in, in a stocky corner, I'm going to call it that one. And then, uh, what to do? I think i just got to keep moving. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the head camera on, people, just so it enables me to fish with both hands free. There's obviously something big in that corner because that gentleman's concentrating on that area. I think I'm going to wind up and go walking. Right under my feet, boys. Right under my feet. Just down here. Just down there is a fish. He is not having it at all. Not even looking. Not even looking. I'll put the bag down there. You probably might see him, I don't know. Oh, he's just got a little turn there. I can stand up a bit now, he's right over the back there. Oh, he's got a big one. Just not looking at that flash. Surely we're going to get lucky. We've got to get lucky. We need to get one fish on this rod. I thought one was going to have a look. See, under that scum, you often get a fish laying under there. And the water from the inflow for the lake comes in there, so it's cooler and it's hot weather. It's a good spot to look. Yeah, there's a fish on the edge there. Just need to get it in front of their nose. I bet there's more than one fish under there. I've filmed them many times. Here's one coming out. Oh, look at this one. Maybe you can see it if I point with the rod, which is difficult pointing and fishing at the same time. Just down there. That's the money shot. Well, long last guys, managed to get one hooked up on Scott's dad's rod. Don't know how long it's going to stay on, I'm going to back up while I put this camera on my head. There you go Scott mate. <laughs> Not in the net, but at least there's a fish for you. The fly was something called when all else fails. So I've been through about six flies, not many hours been to uh, able to get any response at all. So I went down to almost bare hook. My fingers crossed we get to show you. The rod's okay, the rod's good. It's good if it lands a fish for you, Scott. This, I wonder how big 
your rainbow trout was that your dad's had on this, on this rod. It's quite a nice pin, but I like fishing with soft rods. It's not a big fish, it's big for uh, some people, but for Diva Springs they get some really big ones. I'll tell you what, after spending, I don't know how many, I can't see me watch, a couple of three hours trying to get one to take. Look at the bend in that rod, it's got the fish. So, let's get him up here for you, you people. See if this is going to be a lucky fishing rod. I've always liked fishing with soft rods. I have no problem with them at all, but we all get spoiled. We forgot what the old rods used to be like. Oh yeah. That's a nice bend in the rod. There you go, Scott. One for you. One for your dad there. Hey, <laughs> English rainbow trout. That's, probably get that on Mike's barbecue, I reckon. Wanna be a big barbecue. Just gonna dispatch it. It's called a Usain. Yeah, you gotta laugh at me, Usain Bolt. Look away, those who are squeamish. Job done, fish is dead. Let me just show you, this is a nice rainbow trout. It's gotta go, I'd say this. It's Scott's rod and reel. So this one for your memory of your dad. Look at that fish. Would he be pleased with that, Scott? What do you reckon? Would he be pleased with that? But look at the fly. He just nipped at it, just there. It's called, I'll get it out for you now. Oh, good job I've got a barb on it. I wouldn't want to fish with barbless. Actually, these scissors, although the scissors look, I've got a little flat bend to them. So I can get the fly out. There is the fly. You can see that, it's just that. By Sid Nice, just tassels, it's called waif, when all else fails, my God. And then uh, the weight's in the whipping around the hook, wire whipping around the hook to get it down. So basically a bare hook for Scott. It's got to be a nice rainbow trout, what do you think? Would your dad be pleased with that one? Would he be pleased with a fish like that? I'm pleased to catch that for you on that rod. There's the rod and reel, a bit caught on. Actually, do you know what? This reel's as nearly as old as, this, uh, as your dad's rod. And this is an intrepid, Rimfly King. It's really a salmon reel, but that's what I use. A bit heavy, it's metal. Did it do the job? Yeah, of course it did. Of course it did. And as all you awesome army followers know that support us, although it's achieved the target for the day to catch a fish on Scott's dad's rod, I won't be packing up yet. I'm going to get some of that to eat because I haven't eaten for about two or three hours, and uh, then I'm going to have, have another go and see if I can't get to another fish. If I don't, you've seen, that's a nice rainbow trout on that rod. Okay, it is the moment of truth for Scott's fish. I'm putting this fish, I reckon, better than four pounds. There's the scales. Let's get it in. Hang on, I've got to put the camera down, guys. I think I'll put the fish in here first. I'm going to call that four pounds I'm going to call that four pounds twelve, and it is. It's not going to make five. What have we got there, guys? Four pounds eleven. Four pounds eleven, I think that one is. I'll put it that way. A fourteen, four eleven. So that is a nice rainbow trout. Mission accomplished. I lost another big one. Didn't didn't even get a chance to get the camera on. I mean, a big, big one. Big as in possibly nine ten pounds i'm gonna put this in the in here for now and then you need smell a vision for this room you absolutely do this is where they gut the fish so we're gonna have a sandwich one more walk around the light's going a bit and a few more casts with that magic rod Well boys, I've put it on stealth mode and I've got one hooked up. Cast a fly at a thousand fish and this one just came straight up and took it. So there's no clicker on, I've taken that off. It went off like a train. It's the first one I've had respond to a static drop of a fly if he stays on. Good fish too. There's another one for you here, Scott. What I will do, because I've got the 
peaked hat on is take my cap off dare I risk this and put my camera back on because I'm not sure I'm not sure if I've just been filming cap if that makes sense bear with me guys and fish okay you should be getting this now this will be sweet to get another fish and look at that rod it's round like a piece of licorice a licorice stick I'll put him that way so you can see him so there's no clicker on I'll put it on stealth mode the reel that fish went off like a bat in hell and of course soft rods like this I'm at, oh actually advantage when you want to keep a fish at close quarters he's trying to get in that weed a lovely silver fish this one this is a, a cracker if I get it in if I get it in with all this weed on I think here's the spot to try and net, net this fish that was a static trout just laying there almost sleepy oh he's a beauty he is proverbial beauty he went off like I can't tell you do you know what I think he's bigger than the last one it's silver lovely silver fish please stay on no 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 we've got to get this fish for Scott we've got to get it oh yes please this is going to do it boys this is going to do it this is going to do it if I can get him in if I can just get him in get him in get him in come on come on yes what a result tell you what boys <laughs> there you go Scott buddy that's what I call a decent big trout. Let me just get Usain out and we're put into bye byes. Here's Mr. Usain Bolt. That is a lovely looking fish. My God, I'd given it up getting a second fish. Hopefully, you guys can see. Now, look, we nicked it. He just absolutely got it. Oh, he wasn't going to fall off, was he? That's for sure. And that's what it was, the tiny when all else fails. And that's why it's called when all else fails, because I was failing. Brilliant. <laughs> There's your rod. Bit of ribbon we've had. Look at that fish. That one really is beautiful silver fat fish. If that doesn't go the other side of five pounds, I'll eat my own fishing hat. I think I'm going to get this one up straight away, get it weighed. That is a beauty. And guess what I've got on now, Scott? To finish off hopefully with your rod, wait for this, a little northern pike which I know you guys get. It's only small but it's something different on your fishing rod. Let me get him in. Have I missed you? There we go, he's only small. And there he is. So that's a northern pike. I don't know whether you guys over in Canada and America get the uh, muscalunch, but you get the northerns as well. That's what we get. We get them to about 40 pounds, which I suppose an average pike would be probably five to eight pounds. So another fish on your rod, Scott, and uh, I'm going to get this one straight back. Wow, all turned round for me. It's all turned round, it's a lucky rod, Scott. One English pike on a fly rod. Returned. Well, back at the way station. Not a moment too soon, as you can see. It's clouded up, rippled everywhere. This morning is a sheet of glass. So, let's see what this goes. What do you think? People out there, get it in your mind. I'm saying it's the other side of five pounds. Let's see what it says. Let's get the tray down. Yeah, that's over five, boys. There you go, Scott. One, one for you. That might be close to six. Five and three quarters. Right there. That's what I'm reading that. Eight, ten, twelve. What a beautiful fish. Project achieved. Look at the size of that rainbow trout and on that rod. And I'll tell you what, I didn't feel threatened at all, at all with that rod. It's done the job. There's the fishery in the background. I'm going to get this in the gutting room. And it looks like trout for tea.